Hey everyone, I'm just making this quick tutorial because this is something that I've seen quite often. A friend of mine was making this dragon for a game called Draconox, their discord is in the description below, and I thought it was quite a nice dragon, and then he posted the texture that he was using, and it was clear that he was using reference projection texturing. I had asked him if he was going to bake it to clean it up, and he didn't seem to understand what I meant by baking the texture or why he should do it. So let me start off by showing you how this thing was textured. Here you can see the UV projections going on, and you should notice that the UVs are only covering maybe less than 25% of the actual reference sheet. So why is that a problem? Well, the problem comes in two ways. Number one is that this is inefficient. If this was a reference sheet that multiple models were pulling from, then it would be fine. But as a unique model, it's sort of a waste. There's so much empty space here that isn't being used. This texture here is half a megabyte, which isn't big by itself, but if we had hundreds or thousands of objects in this game textured in the way that it is, storing all this dead space can add up quickly to gigabytes. And the second problem, which is more important to me, is you won't be able to paint on your model if you needed to do detail work. With this method of texturing, you're stuck with what the UVs are projecting. So if there's any overlap, painting in these areas might cause problems. So then the solution to this, as I've already mentioned before, is to bake the texture. And what that basically means is we're gonna take the surface data that we already have and try to transfer it into a new image texture. But as it stands, we need a new UV map because the baking process uses the UVs to transfer the data. Using the current UVs would be redundant because we just get the same thing, but smaller. So to make a new UV map, we need to go into the Object Data Properties tab and go into the UVs menu, and then click on this little plus sign right here. And this will create a new copy of our current UVs which I'm going to rename Bake. As I said, this is a copy of our previous one, so I can make changes to this one without affecting the old one. Now, for the baking to work, I need to unwrap this, and fortunately, my friend had already marked this up with seams so I don't have to do it myself. And this is the result. Everything's nicely flattened out and spaced apart from each other. Next, what we need to do is we need to go into the shader editor and make a new image texture. I'm gonna be making one with a resolution of 256, since the UVs in the original were way smaller than the reference. Once we've made both the new UV and the image texture, we can actually move on to baking. Baking is a feature only accessible to the Cycles engine, so we have to go into the Render Properties to change that. Once that's done, we can scroll down to find the drop-down labeled Baking. Now, the only thing that we want to bake here is the texture information. A combined bake would include transmission, reflections, and so on. Nothing that we really want. So we want to set the mode to Diffuse. And here we want to untick Direct and Indirect Lighting. Otherwise, we'll still bake in the shadows and highlights from the scening light, which we don't want either. I'm also going to reduce the output margin, which is the amount of texture created outside of the bounds of the UV to to ensure proper coverage. Anything less than two, I believe, won't fully cover the area properly. Now, for this bake to work, we need to have the base object selected, the empty texture node, and the correct UV map selected. And once all of those are selected, we can click Bake, and this will create our new texture, which will look quite nice. If we take this new texture and plug it in right away, however, it won't look right. The reason being is we are still using the old projection map and not the new one. We can fix that in one of two ways, either by toggling this camera button next to the correct UV to make it the active one, or by explicitly calling the UV map through a UV map node and plugging it into the vector of the image. Once you've gone and baked your texture, you should go ahead and save it so you don't lose it. In this instance, the baked image is actually 10 times smaller than the original texture, which is very nice for optimization. If you wanted this to be further optimized to have multiple dragons, what you could do is convert this to grayscale and use vertex colors to fill in the color, or having multiple color maps that you can swap in and out. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe or leave a comment telling me that you like this video. It's one of the only ways that I know that it's worth continuing. If you want to support what I do, you can support me on Ko-Fi or check out any of my other important links down below. But other than that, yeah, that's all I have to say. So see ya.